So, in the new Worlds Adrift, now formerly known as Lost Skies, we are seeing some very interesting changes in the world generation, as well as wildlife developments. So today we're going to go straight into the newest updates from Skywatch 4, as well as some of the thoughts and types of changes we can expect coming out in the actual game. So to start off, the devs talk about some of the changes to the island creator. And they also talk about how they wanted to speed up the island creation process itself. So one of the changes they refer to here is the ability to filter specific assets for placement, as well as adding the ghost object feature. This function does as it sounds and allows the user to clip assets through one another in order to make a larger yet detailed structure from two. And they even provide us an example of doing so here where they clip two large boulders together, each with varying detail to create an even larger object. Not only that, but they state that these same assets can be scaled up to much larger or smaller sizes depending on the creator's preference. Moving on, they talk about the different changes with creating wall and floor textures for different environments. More specifically, creating roots and overgrown assets that have glossier textures for when there's a lot of rain or there's a wet environment. Another development the team shows off is their addition of the abandoned campsite assets, which depict old ruined campsites which players will stumble across that were left behind from survivors of the Cataclysm, whose fate remains unknown beats me what the Great Cataclysm was, but these survivors eventually had no choice but to cannibalize their skyships to make shelters on the island, which is why the assets borrow heavily from the skyship parts. Now from here they go on to talk about the very detailed and intricate additions to their sub-biome nav mesh shaping in conjunction with the animals AIs, but to summarize more efficiently, they are getting more into making additions to the environment in order to make it feel more real, i.e. Grass and plants move differently with stronger winds, but not only that, players are able to glide further on certain biomes that feel greater wind shafts, for example like the plains and such. And there are also changes so that the sound travels differently in these environments as well, which affects whether or not different animals will be alerted of your presence at different distances. Now another one of their big changes they made to the world is lighting. In the old worlds of Drift, they had highly inaccurate lighting and shadow placement, which while it worked to achieve its job, inaccurately enveloped rooms in the outside environment. So to combat this, they added invisible lighting probes across the entire world. This allowed for accurate GI or general illumination in most environments. Now they even provide detailed comparison pictures for reference to show off how the lighting is more accurately depicted. And with these, I think it gives a better depiction of the changes that they made. Where we see in the newer GI changes, the light appears to come more from its nearest source rather than like a general comb over of light across the entire room that appears visually inaccurate in the shadowed areas. Moving on, we see the devs talk about their early work on their weather systems, and while they say they will go more in depth in a later blog post, they specifically state that the dynamic weather will play a big part in Lost Skies, and that challenging weather walls will separate the different biomes you'll explore. Now they also provide some videos stating these videos are of quote, cloud color tests that they have been working on, as well as texture sampling and experimentation with different weather effects. Now, I think this last mentioned part is extremely important to focus on here, where they specifically mention the color tests and texture sampling. Now, with this, they also state that the weather walls effects utilize a separate visual effect, which takes over from the cloud renderer, which in turn allows them to, quote, customize turbulence, the different colors, etc., for our weather walls independently of the rest of the clouds. Now, as to why I think all of these specific quotes here are important has to do with some of the previous mentioned weather topics in the last video. But more specifically, I think that this is a strong indication of their plans to work on a boss or mass sky enemy additions, because as we've seen in the most recent animated trailer for Lost Skies, the depiction of an almost island-sized boss that is shrouded in this reddish, purplish type electrified clouds has an overall red hue. This in conjunction with the provided video of their color tests, I think indicates that they have started work toward that end development. Now, I personally can say I would love to see some changes where we have different storm clouds in different areas that randomly spawn bosses within these depicted red or purplish type clouds. And something I think they could make addition wise is either making certain weather walled off areas for the spawning of these large bosses or in areas that may require you to travel towards for different missions have increased risk of these large electrical clouds coming in and either increasing enemy spawn rate or spawning in these large bosses to rush the player so he doesn't stay too long in these, you know, hypothetically 
higher tier loot filled areas. But the fact is there are a near infinite number of ways they could go about these developments. And while it's fun to theorize, I myself am not a programmer or a game designer, so I will leave those considerations to those of you listening. But moving on to our last topic, the culmination. Now mixing in all of these world improvement updates with the newer inclusion of clouds, lighting, foliage improvements that provide us with some newer updated and absolutely stunning photos of the newer environments showing off the culmination of their work and I have to say they did a stellar job. I mean the ground fog and intense detail and the overgrown vines, the rocks, it's all just it's stunning as well as the image of like the stalagmite rock cave filled with like you know clouds concealing different parts of you know the rest of the cave i think all these images do an awesome job of showing off the progress that was made this week now if you want to view the skywatch yourself the link will be in the description but regardless i want to thank you for listening and i will see you in the next one peace